Hi, and welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm Bill Lampton, and I'm delighted to have you with us. The information we give you will help you in sales, marketing, leadership, customer service, every aspect of business communication. And the reason I can guarantee that is that I have experts who are with us today. I'm delighted to have Terry Dane from Ocala, Florida. I read his book recently, gave it a top review, which was quite easy to do. And believe me, this is someone who can help us tremendously. He says he helps us earn more, work less, and enjoy life. As the saying goes, anything wrong with that picture? <laughs> so, Terry, welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm glad to be here, Bill. It's a pleasure. Well, what I would like to ask you to begin with is, we often hear the phrase overnight success. When somebody gets to the top, they publish what's going to be a best-selling book, they have many clients, and in your case, you're not pursuing clients anymore, they are pursuing you, which is a nice situation. But you're really not an overnight success, and you tell that in the book, but share that please with our audience. Well, see, I've been doing business online now for 21 years, so that's a long time. I first came online, we'll say, back in the dinosaur days of the internet, which was 1996. And in 96, I was delivering pizzas for a living for $8 an hour, and that was my final job that I ever had and ever will have. And before that, I had bounced around from one dead-end job to another, finally leading to delivering pizzas. And I heard some rumors about the internet, and I, I basically said, you know, this is something that I believe that I can do. And the reason that came up is before that, I had tried to be in my own business. I had tried doing network marketing. I had tried door-to-door -door sales. I think when I got hired for satellite dish sales door-to-door, -door, I probably was one of the shortest people working there, time frame working there because I only stayed for two weeks because I didn't sell a single satellite dish. And it was a long two weeks to you too, wasn't it? <laughs> that was a long two weeks. At the end of two weeks, they said, okay, you haven't sold any. Uh, we have to pay you minimum wage instead of the commission that you would have got. So we probably don't think that this is right for you. I did not look good long range for your financial stability, your retirement, your enjoyment of life. Nothing. Nothing. So the internet, yes, I remember in 1996 when my brother asked me, do you have email? And I said, email? What's that? He said, electronic mail. I said, is that down at the post office? Where is it? So uh, go ahead with your story. You heard about this uh, technology called the internet. So what did you do? Well, see, I went and bought my first PC at Best Buy on one of the few credit cards I still had left that was funds left on the credit card. And after I got the PC, I started training myself to use it. And I got on CompuServe. So this was back even before AOL was sending out all the disks. It was CompuServe. And I got on CompuServe and I started participating in some of the message boards. And to, to start building a business online, the first thing I did was I picked up licenses to some VHS videos, licenses about videos that were like self-help type videos. And videos that I remember like Mark Victor Hansen was one of them. There were several other speakers in some of the videos. And I started selling those online as my very first business from what I called ugly websites. And I put up these ugly websites, selling these VHS videos. And uh, I made a sale here or there in the very beginning. I mean, it, it took a little while, but you know, I actually, you know, was it instant? But in the first few months, I would place the pizza delivery income jo job. And that was because I discovered something really early on that spelled my success online. And that was the power of an email list. And what for me in the very beginning, I basically started building up an email list at my website. And I, my first traffic to it was me going on the CompuServe forums and message boards and participating in some of the groups and saying, hey, I have this freebie that you can get if you go over to my website and sign up for my list, I'll give you this free report. And that, back then, that worked. Guess what? We still use the same method today. I mean, I have clients right now who participate in LinkedIn groups in business to business, or they participate in groups in Facebook as part of their business. They do a lot of other traffic methods also, but they do the, they're doing the same thing now, offering a free report, free video, free audio over to the list, getting people on the list. And I quickly found out that that list was my income online. Terry, you know, I, I am on your list. I receive your emails. 
and one of the things you're doing is you're debunking a lot of what uh, some people say about emails. Some people would say email is a waste of time. People won't read newsletters anymore. There's so much else that we have access to on the social media. And when I send people emails, nothing happens. Well, <laughs> you are proving day by day that plenty can happen with emails. Well, it's interesting that you hear those things. I know I've heard those things from people also, and I don't have the stats sitting in front of me, so we'd have to look it up later, but there's actually a stat I read recently from some of the major companies online that they asked people what they, which way they most preferred to buy a purchase from the companies, and they said email. Email was still the leader, and it was up above 60% that preferred email for making a choice to buy. And that's talking about a lot of the big corporations, which in you'll see if, from my book and from what I teach, big corporations rarely do email well. Okay, they're doing email. They're not doing it great, but still more than 60% of people choose, would choose to buy my email over other digital methods. So email really it does drive sales, and that's been true for me and every one of my clients. We drive some incredible numbers from email in all different markets. Tell us a story, please, about how you challenged yourself, really, before an audience that you were uh, speaking to over a weekend, and you challenged yourself and really taught the audience something about the power of internet sales. Well, see, we came up with a challenge, and the challenge was over the weekend at this internet conference, they would see me send out one email to my list, and I would make at least $10,000. We told everybody about that. As soon as I came up with the challenge, as you can imagine, the promoter of the seminar put it everywhere. He was promoting it constantly that they would see me make at least 10000 from the email to my list. Well, I actually did this multiple times. So the very first time I did it, I was kind of nervous about it because, you know, what if something went wrong? What if I did something wrong, you know, at the email? But one of the first few times, I actually generated like $33,000 in sales the first time I did it. We go fast forward a couple of more times where I had, I had ups and downs. I mean, I always beat the challenge. One of the funniest ones is I did make a mistake one time. I sent out an email that I misspelled my own domain name in the email and still hit the challenge, even with a misspelled <laughs> my domain name because people, by then, my subscribers knew how to spell my domain name, so they went in and spelled it correctly. And we had a whole bunch of emails we had to reply to. No, the actual link should be this. We had tons of emails that came in. So that's a lot of work, but still hit it. Then the highest challenge, the one that absolutely did the best, I did $96,250 in the weekend from one email to my list in front of an audience. And people there said it like totally changed their life and perception to see me as a small business owner do that. Because at that time in my business, my business consisted of my, myself and my wife that helped me. That was the total of the employees in my business, and we did 96000 that weekend. Well, one thing that, that many of us want when we're dealing with a person giving marketing or sales advice, we, we will ask, well, can you prove this, or has it worked for you? My gosh, <laughs> uh, with that challenge, you gave yourself several times, and the way it came through for you indisputably you had mastered a system. And so what has happened is that, as you put it in your magnificent book, How to Sell Without Selling, there was a time early in your career, after you left the pizza delivery business, when you were seeking clients, but you're in the happy, enviable, enviable position now that clients are seeking you. And the reason they are seeking you is because they know that if you can do it, and if you can explain it as simply as you do, and that's one of the things I commend you for, both in your book and online, you give very simple, clear explanations, then that is uh, kind of what you would call the lead magnet right there. It is. Well, part of the reason that I don't really search for clients anymore is, I mean, my methods attract clients, but also uh, this sounds a little bit too much like bragging, but there's, there's a point here that you deliver results and clients stick with me a long time with clients. Cause like I recently, I have a client that's still with me today that pays monthly to me today that joined in 2006. 
Okay, so that's that's a long-term client. And I have multiple clients who joined in 2007, 2008, who are still clients today. So since there's only a limited number of clients I can serve, that basically there's a whole lot that I bring in per year. I mean, there's at most like two times per year that I'll tell people, hey, I have a few slots open. And then I have a waiting list. These are people who said that they want coaching. And that waiting list numbers of at this moment, I'd have to go check at Aweber, but I could promise you it's more than 400 people Wow! on that list. That's terrific. All right, getting to the approach that you describe in the book, how to sell without selling, explain to us what you mean by the golden glove. Well, the golden glove is what I call the basic of persuasion. I originally developed this online by, again, going back to those conferences, we'd always have hot seats and people would want me to review their websites, review sales videos, review emails. And I had to develop a way to find mistakes quickly. Okay, so in a live audience to do it quickly. And I, I basically discovered the Golden Glove and refined it with my friend Glenn Livingston. Together, we refined it even further. And basically, there's five pieces, five things you look for. And you can see my little dogs coming in the background here. Yes, you got a visitor. I got a visitor coming in. But the five pieces that you're looking for in the Golden Glove are the desperate problem, unique promise, overwhelming proof, an irresistible offer, and a reason to act now. If you have a website, or an email, or a video, or even a webinar that's not converting, it's not turning visitors into subscribers and sales like you'd like it to, then you're missing one of those five pieces. You're missing, either you're not describing the problem, and the problem really has two parts to it. It's who are you speaking to specifically, and what problem do they have? Secondly, if, you, if you're doing that, once you have a problem, you then have the unique promise which is what is your promise? What can you do for people? And how does it stand out from the competition? Because you can't make the same promise as everybody else. There has to be something different about what you offer. Third, and this is one a lot of people miss out on one, that's the overwhelming proof. Proof means, okay, we have a problem. You have a promise of how you're gonna help people solve that problem. Now people basically say, now prove it. How do I know this is true? You have to have proof that you can deliver those results. I mean, we have social proof, such as shares on Facebook. We have testimonials. We have case studies you can share. One of my favorite forms of proof is a video demonstration, actually showing results on video. That's one of the best ways to show proof. And I even say a lot of people have what we call proof hiding disease. So they have proof, but they hide it on another page, not on the main pages of their site. People can't find it. And a lot of times, proof is the big aspect. I, there's I have never, ever, not once said to a client, you have too much proof on your website. <laughs> never said that. I've said a lot of times you don't have enough proof, but I've never said you have too much. Then we go into an irresistible offer, which means we have an offer that is worth more than what you're selling it for, that gives people value. And many times we'll even do things like if your website isn't converting, sometimes we'll do something simple like, hey, let's try a trial of the offer. Maybe we sell a product on our website for $99. Well, let's let people try it out for $1 for 10 days and then pay $98. Amazing results from tests like that in many cases. And then finally, a reason to act now. Why should they take action now? What will they lose out on if they wait? Because we all procrastinate. So, and I've had many times where I call it the heart attack curve. The heart attack curve is I send an email and I say there's a deadline Friday. I get a few sales Monday. I get a few sales Tuesday. I get a few sales Wednesday. I get 80% of the sales Friday in the last six hours. That's the heart attack curve. There's a reason to act now because the deadline's almost up. That's the reason all these stores, everybody in retail knows that they run sales. Okay, Black Friday is king in the US because of sales, because it's a reason to act now. You need to have a reason to act now to get maximum response. So those are the five pieces. If you're not converting, you're missing one of those five pieces and you can look at those five pieces to improve your conversion. I'd like to expand, have you expand a minute on what you talked about, uh, about being different, that we can't be like everybody else. You use a phrase in the book and in your online writings that I find very appealing, and you call it the contrarian approach. What is the contrarian approach? The contrarian approach means that everybody else is saying one thing. What can you say that's different? from the rest of the people in the market. Like I'll give you a quick example right here from one of my clients. One of my clients teaches, has tennis videos and like tennis clinics and basically sells a lot of different tennis products. Okay, everybody in sports, all sports, pretty much tells you that power comes from the hips and the legs, correct? 
So we actually run one of his sales videos is he shows you at the very beginning of the bidding, remember proof demonstration, he shows you on a video that he can generate about like 93, you know, 92, 93% of his power while serving on his knees. Okay, we show that at the very beginning of a sales video. And then he goes into the approach that it's really about your arm and the motion in your arm and your shoulder that you're doing after he just proved it to you. And that's totally contrarian from what everybody else in the market says. And as you can imagine, that does extremely well because of both being contrarian and backing it up with proof. I've heard of um, NFL quarterbacks mm -hmm. who could – get on their knees and throw the ball 50 and 60 mm -hmm. yards. And, and that, of course, obliterated how you had to mm -hmm. you take your stance and you put your foot forward. And some of them could do that on their knees. The, the very best ones could, of course. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your book. I was one of the privileged first few reviewers of the book. I have reviewed many books from Amazon. I would rate this in the top echelon of not only well-written books, but useful books. And one of the things I would say to those who are listening to you right now, Terry, is if they want to keep an edge on the competition, get your book. Don't let them get the book and you not get it. What do you hope to accomplish with the book? My big goal with the book is to give people very credible honest information okay this is a negative in the business to business field but you'll notice that a lot of business to business books they the goal is to get clients and attract clients which of course i'll attract some clients long run from the book also but as you know i've you know i stay busy with clients already anyway but most business books they give you like little pieces little filler to give you ideas about what you can accomplish basically they give you some proof about what can be accomplished but to really get the facts you have to go higher with them to find out the truth and what you should actually do. In my book, I actually covered a lot of these principles. And I have like one person who always mentioned to me that he found the book more valuable than some $2,000 internet marketing courses that he had purchased. And with that case, I'm really packing the book with value because I have this attitude. I'm constantly working with clients. And so I'm coming up with new discoveries all the time. So I can pack this book with you know everything you need to succeed because a year from now, six months from now, I'll have some additional discoveries to add on that you can come directly to and find those additional discoveries. But right now, I've packed the book with pretty much everything you need to get started to improve your conversion, to generate extra profits from emails. And as you know, I even show example emails in there in the book, giving you, you know, templates, ideas, concepts, such as those of what to be sending out in the book. So my goal really is to give people a tool set to succeed online in a marketplace where everybody else is just lead generating instead of giving value up front in the book. I think of your book and I referred it to it this way in my review of it on Amazon. I think of your book not as a book. I think of it as a lab workbook. <laughs> this is not one that you just read and say, oh, that's okay. I'll put it on the shelf. Uh, maybe look at it next week. This is a book that is a lab workbook. And if you go back to it time and again, and if readers will do what I have done, and that is connect with you on email and begin getting your messages, there's just an endless flow of information which you have given so generously and so clearly. Time for one final question. And that has to do with the power of stories. You say that if you're writing an article or if you're speaking to an audience, that people are not going to necessarily remember your five points, but they will remember your story. There was a, an intriguing story you told in your book that you had told audiences that they remembered for years something about a cow next door. <laughs> what was that, Terry? Well, the, the cow next door, I call it the cow next door. My near, there was an email that I wrote. The email actual subject line was the internet lifestyle, living the internet lifestyle. Interestingly enough, I wish I would have trademarked that term, living the internet lifestyle, because you hear a lot of people talk about it today. And I actually had it as a subject line of an email back around 1999, 2000 before anybody ever used the term before. But in that email, I discussed the fact that my wife and I lived out in the country and you could live anywhere you wanted and that our nearest neighbor 
next next door neighbor was a cow named Oscar because there was a horse farm and the cow especially always came up to the horse to the side of the fence and would stick his head sideways through their fence and eat the grass on our side of the fence. We'd go over and pet the cow and talk to the cow. So the cow named Oscar was the nearest next door neighbor and people remembered that forever. They forgot the term internet lifestyle, but you actually see that term is used all over the place today. Internet lifestyle, as I said, I wish I trademarked it back then, but the people remembered the cow and I was, I attended and spoke at a conference like eight years later. And at this conference, one of the people came up to me before I spoke and they said, are you going to tell us about the cow named Oscar? I want to hear that story again. And I don't do a lot of in-person speaking, but professional speakers will tell you this because I've spoken to them many times that people will ask if they can hear the same story again. They've heard it the last three times every day, but they want to hear the same story again because that's what we hook on to. That's what we relate to. That's what we remember. And even as you ask questions and I give lessons and I try to teach her and tips, you'll notice I try to bring in examples all throughout because that's how we learn best. I put on uh, Facebook just the other day, statistics will make people snore, but good stories will help their imaginations soar. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. Terry, this has been absolutely fantastic. Before we went on the air, I ask you, would you please consider coming back in a few months? We will want updates on what's happening with you. Meanwhile, uh, tell us two things, please. Tell people, first of all, how they can acquire the book, how to sell without selling. And then secondly, what contact information you want to share with us. Okay. Well, I'll give my domain name first. So you can go over to my website and I have a free email conversion kit to help you improve your results from email, especially giving you seven ways to tell stories and seven types of stories that you can share with your list, even if you're not a writer. And you can pick that up at mymarketingcoach.com, mymarketingcoach.com. And then my brand new book, How to Sell Without Selling. It's, you can find it on Amazon, both in Kindle versions and in print versions. And you can just go over to mymarketingcoach.com slash sell, S-E-L-L, and that'll take you directly to the book on Amazon. Terry, thank you. And I certainly encourage our readers to become very familiar with your offerings, with your systems, and begin to use them. And he has, Terry has had so many clients who have had amazing results. And it's not that difficult. It's a corny saying, but it's not rocket science. I have to say, I'm very grateful for you and for some of my mentors and others who, when the internet came out in 1996, didn't say, this is a passing fad, or it's too tough for me to learn, or uh, the average person won't get this. But we had people like you, Terry, that we're very grateful for, who did the homework, who learned, who kept up with the changes, and who all along have not kept this to yourself, but wanted the rest of us to benefit far, far that, from that. And for that, I thank you very much. Thank you for having me on, Bill. And just as a final encouragement for everybody watching is I like to tell people that online marketing is simple, but it's not always easy. Well, not always easy means that you're gonna to have to put work into it, you're gonna put effort into it. It's gonna take time to practice the methods that work, but it really is simple if you follow a system like I reveal on my website and in the book. Thank you very much, Terry Dean. Thanks to those of you who were with us. I'm sure that you've benefited tremendously from Terry's advice. Look forward to having you with us next week when we will have another outstanding business communication expert to share their experience, their tips, their strategies, and their systems with us. All the best. Look forward to seeing you then.